Welcome to step four of securing a system. In step four, we're going to use EFS, which is included in Windows 10. That's the encryption file system to protect sensitive data and safely store a backup certificate, which is essentially a copy of the encryption key you want to put somewhere safe, not where the encrypted data is, uh, because obviously hackers would know what to do with the key if it was stored with the data. But you're going to put it on a separate thumb drive or in a separate uh, storage location, a hidden directory, something like that. You're going to keep the uh, backup certificate. Oftentimes when people want to safeguard information, most users never give it a thought. But anybody that can connect to your system or access your system can get into your data. Let's pretend we have a directory called secret or sensitive. Let's call it sensitive. Some users are aware of permissions. When they go to the trouble of setting up in security, the access settings, they remove users and they put specific login accounts and that's good until it's copied to a thumb drive that's formatted with fat. If it's copied with onto a external disk or a USB drive that's been formatted using an older type of file system, uh, basically what happens is that um, as long as they got in that screen and on that login, if they copied it to a, a USB or an external disk, as it's copied into that disk, uh, the encryption, a lot of the permissions, the permissions will be removed. Now, the encryption is not. That's one reason why you want to do encryption. So you can try to protect it with permissions, but as soon as it's copied to an external disk or a thumb drive, those permissions disappear. And uh, all that data that's copied picks up the permissions that are assigned to that thumb drive. So if the hacker's permissions are assigned to that thumb drive, naturally the hacker can read your stuff. What we want to do is take advantage, not in the security tab, but in the general tab. And if you click under advanced, you'll see an option to encrypt the contents to secure data. I'm going to say OK, and immediately, as soon as I hit apply, uh, it should ask me, it usually asks you, uh, do you want to apply this to this folder or all the files and folders within? And it's going to create the certificate to uh, decrypt or decode that data. Um, during a practice session I used the directory name sensitive, so I'm going to delete this and I'll, I'll, I'll use a new one. Um, we'll call one none of your business instead of sensitive. Um, I want you to see the pop up that comes in, so I'll use my right mouse button and select properties. And instead of using the security tab to set permissions, I'm going to stay in the general tab and go to advanced. And I'm going to select the box that says encrypt contents to secure data. Now, uh, once again, there's usually a pop up that asks if I want it applied to just this directory or this directory and the contents within. And you're going to want to pick the second option for this directory and any files and subdirectories within. You may not see a padlock right away indicating it's active because we don't have anything stored in here yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a hypothetical file that I want to, I don't want anybody else's uh, nose into. Let's call this uh, bank account access. And I'll just put some hypothetical information in there. Oh. Yeah. I'll, I'll call this a pin code for my Swiss bank account. 
There we go. And I'll close that and save it. And I'll go back up. At this point, you see there is a padlock here. So the contents of that are protected. But uh, one thing I want to do, once I start using EFS, I want to keep an extra copy of the encryption key and the certificate that's used with that feature. And in order to do that, I'm going to open up a command prompt with administrator privilege. So to do that, you'll click on start. And if you don't see it on your start menu, you can type CMD. And as it appears, you'll notice a run as administrator option. I've already got it opened. And uh, you want to go to a, a directory where you can look for the result to um, copy that again to a secure store, a uh, separate thumb drive in a vault, a disk, anything like that. The command is real simple. I'm going to give this the EFSRA for recovery agent. So it's encryption file system recovery agent. But you can name it anything. You can call it none of your, you get the point. Uh, I want this to take on the semblance of something professional. So I'm going to leave it EFSRA. It's something I can look up online if I forget what it is later. The command is cipher space forward slash r colon EFSRA. When I hit enter, it's going to ask me what password to use to protect the .pfx file. I would suggest you use the same password associated with this login um, for this account. Whichever account you're logged in uh, on screen right now, you want to use the same password. Um, unless, of course, you use that same password everywhere. It's going to ask you to confirm it. That's another thing you're going to want to keep a copy of. Uh, so what you could do is uh, go to this directory then. If we go into our temp directory, you'll see now that there's a certificate and a PFX. It's the key, uh, the container for the key. You could have a, a quick text file with um, the password that you need to unlock this and keep it in a separate place yet, even for better security. But in any case, uh, you don't want to keep the password value uh, with these two files. And you don't want to keep, you certainly don't want to keep these two files. The last thing you want to do is uh, copy these two files and then put them in here into none of your business. Because basically somebody will see this file is encrypted, but then they'll see the keys there. And then they'll see the password <laughs> information. And it won't stop them. Um, as long as they have the PFX file, any uh, person can unlock the encryption. EFS is powerful. It takes uh, some very uh, high-powered hardware to crack uh, the encryption of EFS. That's an advanced standard, so it's actually pretty strong stuff. But what I'd like you to do is capture a screenshot of this showing the, um, and if you change the view, you can actually show the, the file, right? So the file is encrypted. I want you to get a screen capture of this, and then I also want you to get a screen capture of the key. So you could, you could show it um, as you as you've moved it to a USB thumb drive. That would be ideal. I'll go ahead and pause now. Remember to take those two screenshots, paste them into your Word document. Oh, you see here uh, from step three, I show my um, login account set up for two-factor authentication. 
and uh, on step four that's where I'm going to paste these things. Stay tuned for step five. Step five is all about how to respond to network exposures. We've already seen 5A, which has to do with firewall settings. But there are four other things you can greatly reduce your exposure in, uh, on the network. And then there's just one last step, step six. We also have additional credit options you can pursue uh, to add even more to your score. But um, that's it for step four.